Well, good morning and welcome back to another Big Cat update. We've uh, got news. There is two males that's infiltrated the Mayambula's territory. These boys have bumped a Mayambula lioness and they're busy following her trail at the moment. They haven't had any sign of the pride males, but it is an older and a younger male. But they're on a mission. The lioness is probably about 150 meters in front of them. See how they scenting the ground there and doing the phlegm and grimace. They're basically testing the scent of these lionesses. But while they're moving through, they might be getting the scent of the pride males. Remember the pride males has been marking off this territory vigorously around the core. And they're very close to the core where the cubs were born. I'll say the boy on the left looks about five years old and the guy on the... On the, I mean on the right looks about five years old that's laying down the guy that's standing slightly younger maybe six months to a year younger but I've got no idea who these male lions could be guys but they're in the heart of the Mayan Bulas territory and remember cubs younger than 14 months runs the risk of being killed by new nomadic males and all the cubs of the Mayan Bulas, all 11, is much younger than 14 months. But these boys have not seen the Skoro males, and both Skoro males are gigantic and looking very good. So the lioness that they were trailing was on a mission from the west to the east. So I'm wondering if these boys are not coming from the far west. This guy is looking big. Now when they're between 5 and 6 years old, they get ready for a pride takeover. That's more or less in the time where their nomadic phase ends. This could become a problem in the coming days, guys. See the mane is slightly undeveloped on this yeah. chap. Yeah. Well, folks, as we entered the sighting, I didn't think that this would happen. <laughs> Another twist. <laughs> But the males in a coalition sometimes does have that uh, submissive sort of behavior towards each other or overpower each other in a certain subtle way to gain submissiveness. Yeah. Are you going to rub heads? Christopher, you said that they would, they would, if they find the cubs, right, they'll kill them? Absolutely, they, yeah. They, but they'll kill them to eat them or they'll kill them just to kill them? It depends on their level of hunger, but typically just to kill them. Ah. 
to eliminate the competition, the possible future competition. And that will also induce the females to come back into estrus. So that's typically what happens. But the boy is still on sort of the same spot on the edge of a woody layer watching towards where that lion is moved towards. But they're very careful. They might sense that the Scoro males was here during recent days. Alright, so they're getting up and they're moving further to the northwest, closer to where, towards where these lionesses moved into, or this one lioness moved into. This could be problematic if the scorter males are not close by. Morning. Well, folks, let's see how this unfolds and plays out. But I'm, I'll be sure to update you guys very soon on this. And let's hope all 11 cubs will remain intact and the scorter males will do their thing. But I think these guys do not know what they in for when they see that score of males, which is both an excellent shape. Well, good afternoon. This is a follow-up sighting of the two males that did infiltrate the Mayan Bula's territory. It is just after five o'clock in the afternoon and we thought we we're gonna swing by the last location where these boys were found, just to see if they are still within the area and they are indeed they're still in the heart of the Mayan Bulas territory so tonight when these boys get active it's going to be quite interesting to see what's going to happen and where they're going to go and will the Scoro males pick up their scent and how this will unfold but for now they still lazing in some thick grass as you can see the visual was good for a moment quite a bit of flies in the area they've been using that tails very frequently to swap the flies I think the grass a thick very thick grass turpentine grass might help temper the flies around them slightly with the two brothers close to one another. We did get an update this morning that uh, it is the Guernsey and the Malwana male all the way from the Thorny Bush Game Reserve. They moved a hell of a, hell of a way to get up towards the Timbavati side or went towards where we are here in the central Timbavati. So good luck to these boys especially if they see the score of males. Interesting change happening here folks. The squirrel males are vocalizing to the far east and this did definitely catch the attention of the Milwana and the Guernsey boys. That's the call of dominance boys, you better be careful. These boys definitely have to choose their battles carefully when they're out here. If you guys had to see the two squirrel males back here folks, you'll understand they are mightily big males. So let's see what happens tonight. It's going to be a mighty interesting night with regards to dynamics but I do think these boys are probably going to want to avoid that. Well folks I think from here we're going to attempt to maybe go try and follow up on those scoro males that was vocalizing to the east. Well, just another update the Mayambula females there is four of them right here with their cubs looks like the older cubs and the younger cubs together so they will be all 11 
but they are exactly smack bang in the middle between their own pride males further east that vocalized earlier on and the two new nomadic males, the young Milwana and the Guernsey male all the way from the west southwest. Interesting things might happen tonight, those squirrel males are moving closer and I don't think they're going to hold back to try and find these two new nomads. I think after this morning when one of these lionesses were trailed by those two males that they're feeling quite relieved that their pride males, the mighty squirrel males, are on their way back. Looks like they went for a far patrol to the northeast, which they have been frequently doing. Well, the cubs completely unperturbed by the presence of the new males further to the west. But I bet you the adults are thinking differently. I would love to see that one come down from that tree now. I don't think it's going to be graceful, folks. That sibling is uh, planning his descent there very carefully. Let's see how graceful it can be from a lion's perspective. So with all of the seriousness aside, it's quite nice to see some of this play behavior. And to think about it... Ooh. To think about the two nomadic males in the area and the risk involved, these cubs are younger than 14 months, so if they do manage to penetrate, it will definitely be the last of some of these cubs. And that's why the mortality rate is so extremely high. That's to 40 to 50 percent of lion cubs succumb to those kind of, those kinds of adversities out here. Well, I'm impressed. That was very athletic. To give you all an idea, I'm going to zoom completely back. Look at those folks in the mirror. You see there's some happy guests smiling back. Michelle, thank you. And Tracy there at the very far back. Hey guys, happy days. The guests visiting Rockvik has been very lucky with sightings. Those guys at the back did manage to see the Magnificent Seven during their six night stay. Well folks, the day is coming to a close. As you can see darkness is setting in over the Timbavati Game Reserve and we didn't manage to locate the score males but tomorrow is another day. We left those Mayampulas in peace for now but let's see how it's going to play out tomorrow morning. I'm Christoph Skuman and cheers for now.